what we have to do now is to define a way for us to be able to manipulate the data in the database, which means that we need some way in the Java code so that we can manipulate data in the database. So if we want to save a new server, update a server or delete a server or list all the servers. So we need to have a way in the Java to be able to do that in MySQL. And that's why we brought in the JPA because JPA is going to make this really easy. So what we have to do is to just go ahead and create a new package. By the way, you don't have to create a package for everything. It just help organize the code. So you want to create a separate package for different parts of your application. So everything that is related together, you want to make sure you put them in the same package. So here I'm going to create something called a repository. So I'm going to say repo, for example. So that's going to be the name of the uh, package. And then inside of that package, I'm going to create an interface and I'm going to do class and select interface and I'm going to call it server repo. So we're going to do server repo. So repo is short for repository but you can name it repository if you want. So what we have to do here is to extend a class called the JPA repository. So we're going to extend JPA repository and you can see it coming up here. Now, when we extend this class, we need to give it two pieces of information. The first piece is the domain or the class that we want to manage. In that case, that's going to be the server. So that should come from our model. And then we have to give it the type of the primary key. In our case, that was the long type. And if we go back inside of the server, you can see that the primary key here. So the field in the class with the ID annotation. So that's a long type. So that's what we're giving to this server repository here. We're saying, hey, we're managing the server so we can update, delete, read all the servers in the database. And also the type is long. So by extending this class, we have access to a bunch of method that we can use. And I can go inside of this class so that I can show you. So this is going to list everything we have in a database. This is going to list them, but also we can pass in a sort that's going to sort everything. We can also save some kind of a list or a collection. So you can see that we have access to a bunch of methods already that we can use to manipulate the data inside of the MySQL server. So we don't have to define all this manually. But I do want to define one method manually, which is to find a server by the IP address. So I'm going to say this is going to return a server and I'm going to call it find by IP address. So the name here is very important because when you do find by, then you're telling JPA that you're trying to do a select and you want to select by whatever you put here. So wherever the IP address equal, whatever we're going to pass here inside of the parameter of the function. So here I'm going to say string IP address. And also this field should exist in your class. So I'm going to finish this with a semicolon. So the find by tells JPA to select a server and then it's going to check to compare the IP address here with the IP address that we pass in here. And another example, just so you can understand this. So for instance, if we knew that the name was going to be unique so that when we try to find a server by that name, it's going to return one server. In the repository, we could do something like find by name. So just to give you an example, I could do something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this whole thing and then go down and paste it. And then we can do find by and then we pass in name. And then here we would pass in the name. So that would work as well. So we would pass in the name of the server we want to find and then find by would select that server by that name. So as long as you have this field in your class, then this will work. And this is a language that you can actually learn with JPA, like how to construct your methods so that they can be equivalent to certain SQL queries. But that wouldn't work in our case. Multiple servers can have the same name. So that's not going to work in this case, because if we try to do it this way, that's going to say, hey, I return more than one value and it's going to throw an exception because that's not going to be unique. So I'm going to get rid of that. But I know that the IP addresses, they're going to be unique. So I can, you know, define this find by IP address. And I know every time it's supposed to either give me a server or tell me that it didn't find anything, uh, any server by that IP address. So extending the JPA repository is how you manage your information or your data in the database, because this will allow you to save information in a database, update them, delete them, etc. And also there is a lot more we can do with the JPA repository, but I'm just giving you a small example, but you can really take this to the next level and define multiple different methods. And by just the name, JPA is going to interpret the name and be able to sort things and limit things and do all kinds of stuff that you can actually do with SQL queries.